In this video, I'm going to tell you why the $500 Canon G7X Mark II is a great camera for both beginner and professional photographers. brief history on the Canon G7X Mark II is that this camera was a very revolutionary camera in the vlog world. Its video specs and its portability made it very popular amongst YouTubers and a lot of people actually built their careers using just this camera. I still think the video specs and vlog capabilities of this camera are great, but with recent iPhones and expanded video technologies, I think this camera is a little outdated for video and there's a, even a Canon G7X Mark III model which isn't reviewed very well, but there is a whole nother camera ahead of this one. So if the video specs aren't that great anymore, and there's even a model that comes after this one, then why would anyone pick up this camera, especially if not for video? Well, I think the answer is because this camera is super portable and super affordable. Those are the main two points that I want to drive home. The pricing of this camera may be skewed a little bit because these still now sell new for around $620, but there are thousands and thousands of these and you can actually find a good deal for these on eBay for 500 or less dollars if you're being diligent and doing your research. So being patient and waiting for these cameras is good and getting one a little beat up and used doesn't matter that much because it's probably how you'll be using this camera anyway. For a $500 camera, it is really durable. This camera has just been thrown into my bag with no pad in and nothing else and it is holding up. It's even getting a little bit of a nice patina from the metal. Some of it's wearing off and showing a little bit of silver and I kind of like that look because it shows that this camera has been used. And that's the other point of the Canon G7X Mark II is that this camera is extremely portable. I mean, if I pull my phone out here, you could see that it is substantially smaller in terms of its size. It might be a little bigger in its width, but I mean, it is very small, and it's actually a pocketable camera. And when you think of other pocketable cameras in this day and age, like the Fuji X100V that's been advertised a lot towards beginners, that camera is reselling for about $2,000 and it's very unattainable, and it's not even a truly pocketable camera. It's a camera that although has like a nice fixed small pancake lens on it, it still can't really fit into your jeans. You still have to throw it into a bag. But with this, you don't need a bag. You can just take this out and actually throw it into your pockets. I actually took this camera on the Mighty Five Loop, which visits five national parks in Utah, and then even goes down to Monument Valley, Antelope Canyon, and other areas in Arizona, and this was my main photography camera. I took my Canon EOS R5 with me, but I was mainly just using that for video to make sure that I had something to show to you guys. Now the settings that I was using on this camera was making sure that this is in RAW. I do not recommend shooting JPEG at all. This camera is a 20 megapixel sensor and the RAW files aren't too big, but you definitely want them so you have that editing capability with the white balance and pushing and pulling your highlights and your shadows. If you shoot in JPEG, I definitely don't think you're getting the full capability of this camera. If you don't know how to edit RAW files and you are a beginner, you can shoot RAW plus JPEG, but make sure you keep those RAW files so you get their presets and even your own edits once you learn how to do that in the future. And I think that's something that I want to emphasize is that as a beginner, this camera, if you're just pointing and shooting and shooting those RAW files, this is going to keep up with you and this is going to get great results. I didn't find that the highlights were blown out too much or the shadows were unrecoverable. This actually had a good exposure meter and this actually has a great layout on the top which I think is good for beginners which is, has an exposure compensation wheel which is great for adjusting your exposure if you do notice that the highlights or shadows are not exposed properly. And one thing that I really love about the Canon G7X Mark II is that when you throw this in manual mode and you use a low shutter speed, this camera is actually very easy to handhold and it doesn't have a hard shutter so it's really easy to actually get some nice low shutter speed photos without having to use a tripod and I think that's why it's a great camera for professionals too is because this camera was something that I was able to throw in my bag the last minute after it was packed and it's still able to get a great image. I don't need to bring my tripod with me if I don't want to. It even has a pop-up flash that I can use if I was doing some portraits and I wanted that cool film look. This camera really has a lot going for it because there are tons of cameras out there now that just don't have the flash in them and you have to bring an external flash. Now it may not look like a professional camera, but 
at this point of my career, I'm definitely not trying to look like a professional. I'm just trying to travel easily and make sure that I get the shot. And if you had this camera on you as opposed to your iPhone, you're definitely getting a better image. The whole time that I took this camera out, I also didn't need to charge the battery. This camera turns on super quick. All I was doing was pointing and shooting. I wasn't using the flash. And this camera got to about 20% of battery life left. That's not to say that this camera has amazing battery life. That might say that I was really just taking photos when I wanted to and not keeping this camera on all day. If you kept this camera on all day, I'm sure it would drain its battery. But for most people, if you're just using this for one day and then you have access to charge it at night, you probably won't even need more than one battery for this camera. But other things about this camera that I really like is the fact that it has this flip-up screen. To be completely honest with you, I actually enjoy this type of flip-up screen a lot more because if you're doing street photography and you end up shooting with this down at your hip, most people won't be able to tell that you're taking a photo. But if you have a flip-out screen to the side and you're holding that down, most people can see that you're looking at a screen and you are taking a picture of them. So I like this for the discreet nature. And I even like that it goes all the way up. Yeah, you can't use a microphone with this, but if you're using this for photography, this is great for selfies. And this feels so much more secure than those side flipping screens. I always feel like something's going to happen and fall on those screens and really knock them out. As opposed to this one, if something hits it, it's most likely just going to fold down and into place. And that feels a lot more secure, and that's good for me. It also has these tilt down functions, so if you need to get high up shots, you can definitely do that too. So I think the screen is great. Canon's really good for those touch functionalities and the settings menu in these cameras, so it's a very beginner-friendly camera to use and set up. So my final verdict and recommendation for this camera is to get this camera used because it's going to be significantly cheaper. If you're a beginner, this is great for both photo and video. It's something you can learn on, it's something you can evolve with. You can slowly find out what types of focal lengths you like to shoot because this does have a zoom lens. And this is a relatively cheap point and shoot, so yes, this isn't going to be the greatest camera of all time. But in terms of my use and most people's uses, this is going to hold up. So if you're a beginner using video, finding your focal length, shooting photo, and learning how to edit your raw images, this is a great camera to learn on. There are tons of other beginner cameras, but this is the one I would definitely recommend, especially for its history and significance. It's a great camera to use, and there's great support groups and people who know how to get the best out of this camera. And then on the other hand, if you are professional, I think this is a great camera to throw in your bag because it's going to make sure that you get the shot. I know sometimes I've went to, you know, the grocery store and it has the most amazing sunset of all time. And I'm definitely not taking my giant mirrorless camera around. And I'm definitely not taking anything besides my phone. And yeah, my phone is good for those quick snaps, but shoot and roll, like I said, is great to get those images. Also, with the price of film costs nowadays, using this and this thrown on a quick preset is a great way to just get some nice snaps for your story or some other things that you wanted to use or even some client photos if you really wanted to. But that is my personal view of this camera and how I would use it if I was both a beginner or a professional. I think more people will decide to pick cameras up like this once the Fuji X100V hype wears off. Those Fujifilm simulations are okay I think, but in all honesty, presets and other ways to edit your photo are so much better, and with the capabilities of RAW coming out of this camera, I think it's a great photography camera for most people to pick up. But let me know what you guys think, drop a comment down below, and please drop a like on the video, it helps out a ton with the algorithm, and let me know what you think of this camera, if it is hyped or if it's not hyped enough. I think it's definitely a hyped up camera, but is it hyped enough for photo? Because it definitely should be, and I think a lot of other cameras should be hyped up for photo, especially in the digital world, because if you've seen my Instagram or my Twitter, you know that I shoot with many different cameras, and I always get a usable image, maybe not the best images of all time, but I like to think that I get a good image, and that with all the cameras that are coming out today, you definitely can too. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Let me know if you like the Canon G7X Mark II. Peace.